Who are the Somali people? The Somali people are one of the most homogenous ethnic groups on the African continent, and their origins and history can be traced back to antiquity and biblical times. They were not always referred to as Somalis, but bore many different names in ancient times. The people that inhabited the Horn of Africa and were the ancestors of today's Somalis were referred to as the Macrobians by the ancient Greek historian Herodotus. According to Herodotus, the Persian Emperor Cambyses II, upon his conquest of Egypt in 525 BC, sent ambassadors to Macrobia, Somalia, bringing luxury gifts for the Macrobian king to entice his submission. The Macrobian ruler replied instead with a challenge for his Persian counterpart in the form of an unstrung bow. If the Persians could manage to draw it, they would have the right to invade his country, but until then, they should thank the gods that the Macrobians never decided to invade their empire. The tale is consistent with Somali culture, where high importance is given to verbal eloquence, martial bravery, and intellectual riddles. Herodotus described the Macrobians as a regional power reputed for its advanced architecture and gold wealth, which was so plentiful that they shackled their prisoners in golden chains. The Hebrew Bible in the book of Genesis mentions a land associated with the Garden of Eden named Havilah. A river flows out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divides and becomes four branches. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Delium and onyx stone are there. And according to prominent medieval rabbi Sadia Gaon, the land of Havilah is said to be in the city of Zela, in present-day Somaliland, which is corroborated by the 12th century Jewish traveler Benjamin of Tudela, who is said to have visited the prosperous town during his travels to the east. The port city of Zela, anciently known as Avilaitis by the Greeks, is situated in the Berbera geographical region on the northern Somali coast. During antiquity, Zela was part of the Somali city-states that engaged in a lucrative trade network with Phoenicia, Egypt, Greece, Persia, and the Roman Empire. Trade and seafaring were a cornerstone of Somali culture, which is why the Somalis developed their own maritime vessels known as Bedan. The Bedan ships were fast, single, or double-masted vessels that were used for travel or to transport mer merchandise. They are known to be the longest surviving hand-sewn boats in the Horn of Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. Other maritime technologies that were used by the Somalis include lighthouses to coordinate shipping and hourglasses for timekeeping during travel. Somalis developed a very accurate ancient timekeeping system known as the Somali calendar, which is comprised of both solar and lunar calendric systems. While the lunar calendar was mostly used for religious observations, as well as social and economic contracts, the solar calendar was used for weather forecasting, maritime travels, and to identify the seasons. Although unfamiliar to most of the rest of the world, the Somali solar calendar is one of the most fascinating, sophisticated, and accurate calendars in the world. Its evolution probably dates from approximately 2,500 years ago, which is earlier than the Julian calendar, which our current Gregorian calendar is based on. It is based on the number of seven and is organized into four seasons, 12 months, and 52 weeks plus one day. The seasons are named Haga, summer, which is 91 days or 13 weeks, Der, autumn, which is the same number of days, Dira, winter, also the same number of days, and Gur, spring, which is 92 days or 13 weeks plus one day. Accordingly, the year is 12 months, seven of which have 30 days and five of which have 31. Haga and Dira are dry seasons that are known as Jilal, while Deir and Gur are rainy seasons known as Noor. The new year is characterized by a festival called Dabshid, which means lighting the fire in Somali, and where people celebrate by lighting large fires and sacrificing livestock, which are traditionally goats. The Somali calendar year consists of 365 days, which is similar to the ancient Egyptian calendar. Historians have observed a great deal of cultural and linguistic links between the ancient Somalis and their Egyptian counterparts. For example, these astronomical terms have very close similarities. Rah, the term for sun in ancient Egyptian, is Qarah in Somali. Yah, 
for the moon is Tayyah in Somali. Manta for today is Manta in Somali. Awo for night is Awo in Somali. The ancient Somalis are known to have been demolitic, people of stone, who have been associated with tireless building of megaliths. This is shown by the tens of thousands of pre-Islamic built cairns and dolmens scattered throughout the Somali inhabited territories. The cairns are known to the Somalis as Talotiriyat, monuments of Tiri. Somali lore credits the building of those megaliths to giants that once roamed Somaliland. In folk tales from Somalia, Sheikh Hariruyin Somaliad, Ahmed Artan Henge, tells the story of two giants that once lived in Somaliland. One named Habad in a Kamas was cruel, and the other one, Birir in a Barqa, was just and kind. He lived in a cave called Shimbirale, the cave of birds, and used to wear a heavy ring that no man could lift. He answered the pleas of those suffering under the rule of the giant called Habad and defeated him in battle. He then united the two lands and ushered in a long period of peace. Researchers have studied the archaeoastronomical nature of two megalithic sites on the southwest part of Lake Turkana, northwest of present Kenya, and observed that one of the sites has an alignment of 19 basalt pillars, seven of which are non-randomly oriented towards certain stars and constellations that were used to calculate an accurate calendar. Before the advent of Islam, Somalis believed in a god named Waq or Ebe, who is the same as Allah or God in Islam. He is known to have been a sky god, to whom the nomads prayed for rain. His benevolence and consequent rainfall was known as Barwaqa. Islam was adopted by the Somalis during the Prophet Muhammad's lifetime. Somalis were the earliest non-Arabs that converted to Islam. Not only the earliest non-Arabs, but the religion of Islam in Somalia predates almost every single Muslim nation of today. In the city of Zayla, the Masjid Al-Qiblatayn, also known in Somali as Laba Qibla, is a mosque that was built in the 7th century, shortly after the Hijra, the beginning of the Muslim calendar, by the early companions of the Prophet during the first migration to Abyssinia. The edifice features two mihrabs, one oriented to the north, toward Mecca, and the other oriented to the northwest towards Jerusalem, as the Qibla or prayer direction for early Muslims used to be towards Jerusalem until the Quranic revelation contained in Surah Al-Baqarah arrived 15 months after the Prophet's migration to Medina. The name Somali is believed to be derived from the name Samale, who is considered to be the oldest common forefather of several major Somali clans, like the Isaq, Gadabursi, Hawiye, and Darod. But there are also claims that the name Somali could be derived from the words Somal, which means goat and milk, which is reference to the pastoral traditions of the Somalis. Another etymology also proposes that the term Somali is derived from the Arabic word Zawamal, meaning wealthy, in reference to the Somalis' riches in livestock and gold. <laughs>